So, uh, welcome to, to the session about uh, uh, prompt and PowerShell uh, for DNN. Uh, thanks for showing up. <laughs> thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs> uh, thank you, all the sponsors. Um, so, this story has uh, a bit of a backdrop for those not familiar with it, but um, I think. It is interesting to know if you want to put in context what the history is of a particular addition to the f to the framework, uh, because it gives you a bit of a, a context like w where we were heading with this whole thing. So, uh, like, I I know this guy uh, since quite a while already in the in the uh, DNN uh, uh, zone. That was back in 2007ish, something like that. Uh, the X mod guy, and I was the DMX guy, uh, and, and we knew each other through conferences, etc., and then visited each other, uh, each other's places as well. So hung out a lot together. Um, for the 2017 trip to Denver, uh, Kelly, uh, you recognize Kelly Ford, right, all of you? Yes. Okay. So, um, so for the 2017 trip. Uh, I was in touch with him. I said, "Look, you know, you're coming to to the event uh, or not?" Uh, he's like, "Yeah, yeah, don't know yet, etc." I said, "Well, I'm going, um, and if you're, you know, if, whether you're coming or not, I'm going to drop by your place afterwards if, if that's okay." So, yeah, great, you know, come around. And he said, "By the way, I'd like to show you something which I think might interest you. Do you mind?" Uh, you know, uh, taking some time out to have a look. I said, yeah, sure, uh, show me. And he said, I've been working on this thing and I'm going to call it Prompt. And he uh, gave me a demo uh, online and it was basically what we've now come to know as Prompt, but then in a DNN 8 installation and it came up from the bottom as, a, as an overlay screen over the whole thing. And it, it interestingly interested me enormously because I had had similar thoughts along similar lines, not exactly the same kind of train of thought as he had, but for a large part they ran, ran parallel, which is, and I, and I think it leads back to both of us uh, going through, uh, like most of you guys as developers as well, um, f from the web forms age where everything is visual design, etc to the world now where you have Node.js and uh, you do a whole bunch of stuff, uh, uh, you know, by typing stuff. We seem to have gone back in time to, from graphic to command line stuff. So uh, obviously both of us had this like, why can't DNN have features like this as well? Why can't we control DNN in this way? So. Uh, we set off on this uh, together. I said, "Look, you know, I, you know, I have, uh, of course, uh, still a, a relatively prominent position within DNN. I think this is a really cool idea. I think we should take it to the conference, or I, you know, I'm happy to take it to the conference." That kind of drew him off the fence. He said, "Okay, I'll come as well." So, okay, we we both went there. I spent then in the lead up to the conference the last couple of weeks uh, reprogramming what he did into a persona bar extension, uh, added a couple of things which were important to me, which is mostly extensibility uh, of this whole framework, and, um, and, and contacted uh, Joe and uh, Ash at the time. I said, look, you know, we, we want to sh show this to you guys, uh, and, and um, Will, yeah, Will Morganweck at the time, I said, look, this is, uh, this is what we've been working on. Um, interestingly enough, that really meshed with some of the ideas they had. So it was obvious that you know now there's a win-win-win on the table. Now it just means coordinating who does what and how we get this role into the platform. So the rest of that is history. Um, interestingly enough, I did a session uh, there um, about creating a persona bar uh, uh, module. I had the my just my new version of that prompt running on that thing and I just wanted to add a module and I created a command behind the scenes to create a module so um, I opened it up for my audience like I don't know. oh yeah I need to create a module boom I open it up and I create module blah, blah, blah. type the parameters boom module was created window closed and I'm like wait what was that <laughs> 
and just to entice them a little bit, like, okay, if you want to know more about that, then ask myself or Kelly Ford about this around. <laughs> Make sure to plant the seed there at the conference that uh, this was going to be a nice addition. So for, uh, you know, you're all familiar with the, uh, with the solution as it is. Um, and uh, just for those of you that don't know how, uh, how exactly it operates, of course, you know, your browser window being your browser window, um, it needs to somehow talk to your DNN installation. And it does that, of course, through a web API call. And the web API call is this one, API persona bar command, command. Command. And uh, what happens then? Okay, so you get into the uh, DNN persona bar prompt services command controller uh, method, <laughs> which then, all right, I'll, I actually brought it up here so that we could check that the DNN persona bar uh, is in the extensions uh, prompt. So under the settings, there is the DNN persona bar prompt project here. And under that, oh, bloody hell, my, sc my scrolling is not that smooth here. Um, we have, uh, let's have a look, component services command controller. So here, this is your entry point for everything that comes from uh, uh, from that window that you type in, right? Which is very interesting, I find, because if we can do that, we can begin to... Okay, I... I eh, eh, so, anyway, um, it's distributed. Okay, so, yeah, I wanted to explain a little bit about what the code does. The code makes a distinction between whether, it, whether it's a help uh, request or whether it's a command. Uh, so that's the main branch in the code you'll find there. And then when it's a, if it's a command, if it's not help, uh, then it's gonna go to something called the command repository, and it's gonna look for, uh, for a command, and a command has, is basically a class that overrides a, uh, inherits from console command base, where you give it um, properties that the command uh, uh, must have, or must or can have, etc. And um, using a lot of um, uh, attributes, uh, you know, it becomes clear to the rest of the system what that command does, how how help should be provided, etc. And then there's just one big entry point here: run, right? Um, not very complex. Uh, and it's not very hard to to create your own uh, method to uh, you know your own command in this system. The interesting part is because the command repository, like some other features in the framework, is a drop-in thing. So if I drop in a DLL with a command, it will be picked up by that command repository. There's no registration necessary in uh, in the database. Uh, basically, you have a DLL in there that has a command, it will be picked up. And what you, uh, so if, for instance, curly braces command line list users, curly braces, that's, you know, it, it, it's a small JSON string that's being sent over the wire to that web API. What you get back is this in terms of JSON, which is a couple of parameters of like, uh, you know, is error false, is HTML false, must reload false, and then you get your data, which is an array because it's list, right, so it's a bunch of stuff. And here we get one object, so it's a user ID, username, email, last login, is deleted, is authorized, is locked out, password, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, that comes out over the wire, uh, paging info, and and that's it. Okay, so you know, uh, if you want to, you can get into the details if you want to, but I'm going to leave it at that. For me, the interesting part, of course, is if we go through that web API, can we also access it with something else, right? Not just your browser with your little window, but 
uh, in this case PowerShell, it could also be a mobile device, right? Something else that just plugs straight into the web API. And of course that's possible because we have a technology in DNN uh, that uses JWT, right? So if you switch on your JSON web tokens support on DNN, we can properly authenticate through your, our web API endpoints. So that's what I set about to do, to, to, to pry this open, see if this would work, and uh, how we can make that experience of the, uh, you know, how, if and how we would do that through PowerShell. The way I've set it up, the project is as follows. So on the right is what is running in DNN. So we have our prompt extension uh, thingy, which itself is extendable, right? So uh, if you type list users, that list users is actually in the users uh, persona bar extension module, right? That list users command. It's not in the prompt one. If you try to find list users there, you won't find it. Um, so it hands off to to the command there through this mechanism. And on the left, we have your own PC. So you have your, your PowerShell with the Connect PowerShell library loaded. And actually, that can also have extensions. And the idea then is to kind of mirror that to make sure that if you type list users in PowerShell, that that is a known command and that corresponds with uh, what is on the other side. Um, now, right, the initial challenge, of course, that, uh, it, and, and this is where you see how a collaboration like this uh, between myself and Kelly, when you have, when you are kind of going the same direction, but you do have different agendas just slightly, at some point they will appear. So uh, in, in this case, uh, to illustrate that, I mean, of course, in PowerShell, you're no longer in context you're not on a portal, you're not on a page. So you don't have a tab ID, you don't have a, uh, you don't have a portal ID, uh, you don't even have a URL, you have nothing. You're basically in PowerShell. How do you then set your context to make sure that list users knows where to send that command and for what portal? So um, for that, I needed to add some uh, some mechanism to give it context and I'm using the word site uh, in case uh, you know in the, in the vocabulary um, to designate the DNN installation or the URL that we're going to um, and portal in case you want to switch portals. You've got to keep in mind that the command entry point currently is set host only access. There's no other way around that. Um, that was done because, indeed, as we're speeding up and we're rolling out this whole thing into the platform, uh, the approach was first make it pretty restricted and focus on what we can offer to uh, host users in the platform before we start thinking about how we could safely open it up for commands to, for instance, admin users. So for now, it's host-only access. So you need host login to, uh, to access it. But that, for me, made it, again, then possible to make the pitch back to the, the people that were creating the solution or really integrating it into the, into the framework to say, well, you know, I need to be able to switch portal context now because as a host user, I'm allowed to do that. I'm, I'm allowed to say, well, I want to know, know the users for this or this portal. Um, so there are two ways uh, I figured we were going to store this context. So either it was going to be on disk somewhere living, like, okay, these are my logins into these various sites, and um, I can hear you guys all cringe. That, that might not be a really great idea. <laughs> um, but at the same time, you don't want to have to type every time you start up PowerShell to say, I want to go to this site to go through all the motions again, so maybe you just want to store that uh, somewhere on your disk in case that is your scenario. But at the same time, we should also have an option to say, no, 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 we don't do that, it's just a temporary login. 
Um, so the way it's stored is in a uh, in a JSON file uh, in your um, uh, in your PowerShell directory. There will be a, a JSON file called sites.json, and actually it encrypts your token and leaves it there. Right? Um, who has worked with JWT here before? Uh, yeah, of course, Carlos. Yeah. Okay, most of you. Um, so you know that by default, uh, the way uh, DNN works, the um, uh, the session, uh, your session token, uh, your token expires in I think one hour, one hour. Yeah. Two hours, yeah. five minutes. Two hours, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and your refresh token expires in two weeks, if I'm. Okay, so um, this is always a challenge in these kind of applications is that you have to cater for the scenario, right? So if we're going to go there, okay, are we still okay? If not, then refresh the token. Oh, the refresh token expired. Now uh, we have to do a complete re-login uh, to the whole thing. So that always, uh, that's part and parcel of uh, these kind of solutions. Um, but anyway, so you can you can ex you can store these access tokens and use a key to to reference it. So then you can very quickly switch between sites if you have that stored on on disk. Um, that way, you could actually script it in such a way that you can have for every for every command that I created in this solution. Um, uh, if you just add dash key and then the key of the site, you could actually you know, cover a whole bunch of sites in your script um, without having to switch context necessarily yourself. Um, on the fly is different. You just say, you know, use site and then you give all the details and you're in and, uh, and then use portal to switch between portals. So without much further ado, I think that was anything in terms of slides. And I'm gonna try and fire it up and see what we can uh, what we can see here. All right. So um, the way it works is as follows. I have this is the connect. Uh, so there's a project called connect.dnn.powershell. Can be found on GitHub under the DNN Connect uh, um, account. Um, and it's is a the way the project is organized is we have various commands um, we have a kind of core of uh, um, uh, models and the framework of uh, what's under framework is actually the mechanism that makes this whole stuff work like the, the un underlying engine we create a we compile this a dll and we drop that into the directory uh, in our into our powershell uh, directory so currently it's here uh, on my laptop and this is where my uh, PowerShell context is and in my uh, profile uh, script I will tell it look import module and your DLL uh, there so at that point it's imported into uh, PowerShell and I can use all the uh, all the commands that are in there so now if I would like to use a particular site, so in this case I've got a DNN site running under, uh, locally under custom DNN 920. Um, make sure that that's still alive. And I'm just wake it up. And when that has come back, well, it's going to wake up anyway, so I can close off this window. Um, and now in PowerShell, I would like to use this site. So uh, I'm going to um, show the storage uh, option in this case. I'm going to go like, OK, add site um, key DNN920 uh, URL HTTP. Username. Sorry. Host. And I can do it this way 
which supports also piping in a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, of course it's a bit easier or a bit more secure to not do it this way, but it's up, yeah, you, actually I'll show you the secure way to do this. Now it's going to ask me for the username, so host, DNN host, and it's added that site to our sites database, which is a little bit further in the same directory. It's going to go down there, sites, open, edit with notepad, and here we see that we have a token that is that has been returned in encrypted format. So, yeah, but that is, you know, uh, that's one potential scenario, and the other is that you just use site and you can say, well, you know, uh, URL, HTTP. Nine two zero. Right. Right. At this point, I'm actually using the site just for this session. And after that, it will be gone. And um, of course, now I can uh, list commands, and I get the uh, commands to uh, to come out of out of PowerShell for that site. So, and if you want to, uh, you know, you let's say you're going to go to now. Of course, you can use all your PowerShell trickery to work with that data. All right. So now we're in. Now let's say, uh, you know, for argument's sake, we're going to do something with uh, user management. I'm going to set the uh, portal uh, context here. Use portal zero. Uh, actually, there is just one portal, but you know, such is life. And I'm going to go for list users. Well, if I do that, we get them again, kind of like you know, they come as. Uh, in an array of, of objects, um, format table, and actually there's quite a few of them, so we're going to go and add max a thousand, so we know we get all of the users from that uh, from that portal. Um, so now you can, for instance. Uh, Filter, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you're going to go, okay, so let's say so where where object, and now you get this, these funky um, uh, PowerShell uh, is authorized uh, equals false. So, in this case, I'm asking for all users that are unauthorized, right? Filter out all users. But the filtering is done locally. Of course, it gets all the users first, and now it's up to PowerShell, right? We're going to use the power of PowerShell to do so. But can you guys see this correctly, by the way? Is there a uh, way to... Uh, how shall we do this? Command. Command. Yeah. Better. All right, uh, but now I need to uh, hang on a second. Let me just uh, make that window smaller. There you go. And now, if I do Control Plus Plus uh, Command Plus Plus, and I go for a little bit smaller, but a little bit smaller. <laughs> Is there a way to no? Probably okay. Yeah, I just like hundred. All right, that doesn't work as much as I as, as good as I hoped it would. Yeah. Uh, well. Uh, thank you. Yeah. That's what I was actually would over for. The font. There you go. Twenty. <laughs> All 
right. Do I know uh, what I'm still missing part of this? So I need to just set the uh, properties and go for it. Uh, so where's the the wrap the the text and resize? Wrap Box. text. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, I was in the right one. Yep. Wrap text output on resize. Thank you. Yes. Uh. So there we go. Um, so this is the command we just ran. List users, max 1000, where object is authorized equals false. Um, oh, yes, thank you. All right. Uh, equally, you, can, you could, for instance, use that to... Um, to export to Excel, right? Let's have a look at what it does in Excel. There we go. There we go. All my users in Excel. And we can, uh, you know, save that locally. Uh, for instance, export Excel, all right, users.xlsx. Is that the correct extension? Make sure I can um, so now, if I'm in that, I should have that users, there you go. No, I'm <laughs> XLXX, right? Yes, XLSX. There you go. All right. Same thing. All right, so now we've got a, a mechanism to potentially hand over a, let's say the requirement was this, right? You have a customer who would like to have a, an Excel sheet of all the users uh, in their portal and to be able to make changes to that and say, okay, now, and that then is synchronized with my portal. I don't think it's a completely fictitious example. Uh, because having them go through a grid the whole time uh, on DNN with web and whatnot um, is, uh, is for some people just, you know, more cumbersome, let's say. Um, or potentially you could say, well, you know, let's, let's make a, um, uh, we can do conditional formatting, for instance, right? So you can highlight rows. So if you add something like this, we're going to have a format. And that is equal to a uh, new conditional format. And range, no, wait, new conditional format range FF. <laughs> conditional format, I thought I'd, conditional text, sorry. All right, now, and we're going to ex uh, export to Excel uh, again. We export, we just had, and we're going to go for a, uh, let's see, for the format, we're going to use that format. Um, right. Right. So now, if you open up that Excel sheet, you should see a column. Right. Oh, it didn't do it. Hang on a second. Yep, yep. Or that was supposed to work. It's supposed to show one column, you know, in yellow. Uh, like, okay, so this is highlighted, for instance. And now, of course, you could 
you can sort on that as well to, um, uh, to highlight them as well. And uh, let's say, uh, right, 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 right. Um, we're going to go for import Excel. do with that data well I'm gonna show me right where the of that object the user ID user ID doesn't equal null and is authorized This, this should actually pump out the data of all the users, known users within that site that are, uh, that are authorized. And if I, of course, change this to false, then I just get the unauthorized one. And there's that with Whitney that is not authorized on the site, basically, that we just saw on the sheet as well. So th at this point in time, I'm using the local Excel sheet in PowerShell to draw out data from, the power, from, from that sheet. Um, what it's leading up to is that I want to get actually a sheet with, with users that I can go back and forth and I can also add uh, users to that sheet, for instance, and put them back and forth. Now, one of the challenges is that when I do a list users command, the amount of fields I get back is, uh, is less than the amount of fields when I do a full get user and uh, less than the amount of fields that I need for an add user or a set user. And, and this is something that I think we'll have a look at uh, with the team in more detail because I, I don't agree that there should be a difference uh, between the two because it does make it a little bit awkward. Um, if I do a get user uh, 32, or do I, need the, I need the user ID probably, right? Uh, just uh, Right. Now I see that I get display name, first name, last name, uh, you know, a bunch more fields. And if I want to do a set user, which is the opposite command to, to, to uh, change data uh, in DNN, I need all of these fields. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and list the users. And then for every one of those users that I get back from the server, I'm going to do a get user again and use all of those to fill up the Excel sheet. So that becomes list users, right? We get our users. Uh, I need to add the max, of course. Max one, one three. Then uh, I'm going to select a, uh, select the property, right? Property user ready. And now I'm going to feed that into get user. So this then gets the, that gets the user and feeds in that user ID. And that I'm going to go and pump out. Well, if I do it to a format table, you'll see already that uh, we're getting a lot more data back. Now you see the other uh, columns uh, show up as well. We need to scroll to the right to, to see all of that. Uh, but if I put that to, uh, to export Excel, export Excel, and of course, users.xlsx. And I'm just going to go with that, basically. Well, now, if I load up that, that sheet, we should have a few more columns. OK, so now we have all of some first name and last name as well here. Um, user ID is here, username, email, right? And whether they're authorized or not, deleted or not. So we're going to um, 
this, this Whitney, this poor Whitney, uh, needs to be authorized, I think. <laughs> and um, we're going to change her email address. All right, and I'm going to save that sheet. And now I have a sheet with some changes on it. I would like those changes to be reflected back. At that point, I want to import that Excel and uh, move that to, um, uh, to make changes. So I'm going to import. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to seal this out of this. So import Excel. I've got my data. Right, where do we go? Um, we're going to pump all of that where the, uh, all of that data back. I'm just going to go straight to set user. That should work. I haven't tried it this way yet, but ah, almost. Um, user should not be equal to null. User ID not equal to null. And uh, that's right. And OK, yeah, what we see is that there is a bunch where the first name and last name uh, are and uh, that's equal. No, and uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. no, ah, check. We put a question mark in front of it. Um. Okay, now we're going to try and I'm just going to list the users to see if um, if uh, Whitney by now uh, has been uh, has been um, accepted. No, I'm just going to go get user actually with uh, for Whitney, right? She was user ID 32. There we are. Her email address changed. And uh, she's now uh, not authorized. Oh, I didn't set the authorization. OK. That needs to, uh, I'll make a note of that, that that didn't happen. Um, she should have had that set to true. All right. Um, 20 more minutes. I just want to briefly touch on how to extend this because I think the real excitement comes when uh, you can see that actually the commands that we have, I think we're going to polish those and you know get these kind of strange quirks out of them. Um, but the real crux of the thing is in the future you're going to be able to script anything that you just add to the framework. So uh, for that I'm going to go to uh, this directory here, I've, I have a, um, a prompt demo. So all this is, is a DLL with a command. Let me see which, yes? You said that everything is to be framework. Yes. Right, exactly. I'm going to show you how, how, how that works. So um, we have a uh, list resources. What else did I? Uh, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Sorry. Right. I'm going to go for this command that I want to demonstrate. List resources. So in this case, I thought about adding a command to manage uh, resource texts on a DNN installation. Um, so I've created a console command list resources in here. Um, I've added a few strings here and there to create help file and help texts. Uh, the details of that, we don't have the time to go into that, but um, ask me uh, later if you want. Um, and what it will do is um, when you run it, um, it will get the compiled resource file uh, of the resource file that we've specified in our command and it will output that uh, to, uh, to the command window, right? It will, it will list those resources. So uh, in this case, I will, all I'll do is just simply compile it. So we'll create a DLL. Right, and that DLL I have here. And I'm going to drop that into my bin folder of my DNN installation. Uh, that's not the one. Is it this one? Yes. So this is the, the uh, DNN 920 site, right? And then the bin folder, and I'm going to drop them in here. Acme prompt demo. That's all I've done. Right. At this point in time, when I reset the site, or I restart the site, because it, it will recycle the app pool, I'm going to go to uh, the NN920. Pull recycle. Q song. Q song, exactly. All right. And now if I log in, it's logging in. Q song. Q song. <laughs> it's logging in. music. <laughs> and we have the persona bar coming in. Uh, we now go to prompt. <coughs> and now if I list commands, I should see that list resources command somewhere come up as well. List resources is here, right? Uh, the one that I just dropped in there, that DLL. So um, that should now work as follows. So I'm going to go for resource file. That was the uh, that was the parameter, and I'm going to go for the following desktop modules. Bring to mind. Oh, I'm going to go for one of my own. All right. Dmx app. Says, and we're going to go for oh dispatch. There's nothing in there. Okay, this patch. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so that gives me five keys that it returns as a little uh, blob. Now, how do we um, make that then available in prompt? Uh, we're going to go to that project again. Where were we? There you go. And. So I have a similar project for, oh, okay, sorry, yeah, uh, same thing, yeah, same project actually, I just loaded two projects in there. Um, the corresponding PowerShell project is almost as, uh, as small. Oh damn, I did the set secure pages one. Okay, well. 
set secure pages then. Um, but it's basically the same thing. I also basically have to override a class there, set the command, uh, etc. So um, the uh, the list resources one, I think I, uh, oh, that's right, I didn't, I'm going to just add that, otherwise. Um, is that a good idea, Peter? Uh, probably not. I'm just going to copy over some stuff here. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Who, who, who are these people? And how do you, how the hell do you switch Skype off? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah. Two seconds. Oh shit! I have to. Uh, Okay, I can't. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm going to have to switch this demo very quickly uh, to the other thing because I'm missing a few things here. I'm going to delete this and just drop it into the PowerShell thing. So, um, <coughs> here DLL more or less the same process I am going to drop it to where I have my PowerShell stuff which is here and uh, but with PowerShell I have to actually uh, tell it right uh, I have to actually load it so I'm gonna go and say well I have to import module uh, that one Acme prompt demo PowerShell and in that case, uh, whenever I start up PowerShell, blah, it will load that. Yes. All right. Now, so if I, it actually, uh, right, no sites being defaulted. So this now hooks into, uh, into this thing. So set secure pages, help set secure uh, pages because that was also there um, uh, there we go oh, I should have maybe added the help file already um, the idea was that, that what I found cumbersome is that it was hard to see if all your tabs had been switched to uh, to secure or not right so if I do um, uh, I'm gonna now set the context by the use site DNN 9 to uh, key DNN 920, oh. right? Then use portal zero, All right? And now list pages. And uh, for instance, get page. Mm, what is is it? Tab ID. Tab ID, or no, I think he stuck with the same vocabulary. Page ID 35. Right. And, okay, we see here all these, um, all these pages. You can't actually see if it's uh, uh, secure or not. Um, we're going to go to the database. <coughs> open that up. And show you. Oh, yeah, now I remember this. Uh, Ba -bum. 
All right. Go to that database. <coughs> 920, right, tables. Right. Is secure, right? So, uh, All right, that should make it clear what we're actually doing in data here. There you go. Okay, so these are our list key. Uh, can you open up? Um, bear with me. Right, the list of um, of all the tabs in this portal with the secure setting for it. So the idea of the command is that um, uh, what I can now do is say, well, okay, I'm going to go for set secure pages, um, secure, I believe, the Boolean, and then true. Right. Now, if I rerun this for all of the uh, for all of the pages within the portal, the is secure setting is now flipped to true for all the pages. Right. <coughs> I can do the same in reverse, of course, now. Set secure false. And thank you, my dear. And all of a sudden, all the pages are unsecure again. Mark this down. All right. it's, it's a tiny example of how we can augment the DNN system for certain tasks that are currently a bit cumbersome to do. I don't know a good way to, I mean, you, you can do, a, I think, a security analysis probably on the site and see kind of statistics on this, but to get a list of like, okay, how do I, uh, you know, which pages are marked as secure, I think the only way is to go to the database currently. Um, so prompt can offer a, uh, a mechanism with which we can now begin to shape the administration of DNN um, in the way that we feel uh, is useful and, and more powerful. Um, so I think that is uh, you know, in a, in a nutshell, um, where I'm heading, you know, what, what, what would be my agenda with, uh, with Prompt and, uh, and PowerShell. Aranka. Uh, when you put all the pages to secure, is there a reason that uh, two to four are hosted? Yeah, because they're, they're host, uh, host uh, access oh, okay. on the pages. Yeah, so they're not formally part of the portal. Okay. Uh, I was just... Yeah. Looking like, oh, not no, no, exactly. You're, you're, you're like the, the real IT person going like, wait, there is a... <laughs> I see a pattern. <laughs> I see a pattern, but... Sergey. Okay. Uh, uh, if, uh, if I would like to add more methods, right? Yeah. So uh, I have to have a separate DLL for every no. method? No, no. you can bund bundle all the methods. The, what I would like to see is DNN Connect starts a community library of methods. Right. I would like that project to get, get going, that we have a kind of a repository of useful method, methods that we all agree on. Um, not these very tiny commands like here. Yeah, yeah, fragmentary commands like this, but we, we, we accumulate those uh, in code. It's pretty easy because it's mostly drop-in, so any pull request with a command is maybe just, it's, it's just one file, right? And needs to just be included in the uh, in the project, and um, I, I think that is fairly simple to do, and it's uh, on both sides, uh, right? Uh, two DLLs. I guess best practices for module developers would also be to uh, to add the support for their own modules. Exactly. Exactly. So that your model, module exactly. Can so that, that I mean, one of the. Um, uh, one of the goals I had uh, in the beginning with the extensibility was that as a module developer, of course, if this is baked into the platform, you can take a dependency of it and say, okay, well, I'm going to implement these commands. Unfortunately, the dependency is on the uh, core library of the persona bar. Mm -hmm. I would prefer the whole thing to be shipped into 
like the real core, core, core of DNN so that we can start to build out, like any, any module can just be delivered and know, okay, this is fine, I have, uh, I have these commands now made available. Um, yeah, exactly. So, and, and of course, it, it, you know, the, the benefit is you, you can provide more specific admin functions that you don't want to implement in a UI, either because you uh, risk bloating a UI, right? You overload a UI with stuff that you don't want to bother all the other users with. You don't want to have UI that rarely anyone uses that, um, uh, that you need to keep uh, maintained. Uh, I ran into that in several projects that someone would go like, oh, you know, that control doesn't work anymore. And you're like, yeah, you're the only one on the planet that uses that. <laughs> I didn't realize, <laughs> right? Um, and um, uh, so, the, yeah, those are the two uh, main reasons for me to, uh, to branch something off more towards prompt. And from what I understood from Joe was that he was looking at it in the same way from the perspective of DNN as a whole, right? The whole, the whole thing is like, yeah, we could have like set secure pages, you know, have the whole UI for this set up would add, uh, uh, again, a load of pages for what might be very infrequently used. Um, but being able to script it, you can just have that easily on the page somewhere. Oh, you, you want to set all the secure pages, uh, all the pages to secure it? This is the command. Okay, now I know how to do it. But ironically, someone could build a Windows client or a Mac OS client to just tap into the same. Yeah, to tap into the, and, and to tap the same. Honestly, who uses CLI? Yeah, who uses yeah, exactly who uses CLI? I don't know how you explain that to your users. I don't think any user wants to use CLI. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so you yeah. call authentication. So yeah. uh, it uses only DNA authentication, right? Yes. To, to connect. Yes. Is it uh, something like uh, even like uh, uh, Active Directory? Or well, it, it, it leverages the DNN cores system. So if, if your DNN uses another authentication mechanism, normally that should wire through, right? To whatever you've installed as a way to authenticate. So you kind of like at, at PowerShell uh, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's actually, if you, uh, to be completely correct, it's at the web API level. So if you're able to drill into that web API through authentication using JWT, but JWT, um, uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but that leverages just your core framework authentication. Uh, that is already there. So if you've added another authentication method, that should be transparent to... Uh, to the, the local uh, database of DNN itself and usually the authorization uh, uh, should uh, copy some user information to DNN's own database right. but will it uh, normally use a random password so that will be an issue I think because you don't know the password usually I guess no but JWT now you um no, but you're authenticated in the uh, same way, right? It's just a series of names. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's just usually a series of names, so uh, yeah. I, I think in DNA's case, it's, it's essentially it's the user table record for you. Yeah. Um, base 64 code is inside. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, so uh, and I'm pretty sure it transparently uses whatever is, is installed uh, behind the scenes. Um, I was alerted to one thing is that someone tried this with a TLS 2.1 site and apparently there's some issues there so you know we're obviously going to brush through this uh, uh, through, through issues as we get this started right now there is very few people who are aware of this project so Matthias uh, locking so, uh, no. yeah I know you exactly so we really last question that yeah uh, locking included? Uh, uh, no. I, no. I suggest you really, you know, your yeah. base class that you inherit from should be logging everything. Oh, logging, sorry, yeah. logging. Okay, it's, I saw logging. No. Logging. Uh, good point. <laughs> yes, yes, you have to document what you do. Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, please feel free to use it. Thank you.